On September 16th, 22-year-old Masa Amini died in Iran after she was taken into police custody for not properly wearing a hijab. Since then, protests have broken out across the world, but in Iran, protesters are facing a strict government crackdown, including internet blackouts. Jennifer Brody is the U.S. Policy and Advocacy Manager at the nonprofit Access Now. Jennifer, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. So what types of internet disruptions are people in Iran facing right now? Uh, so currently the internet is shut down across the entire country, um, including in the capital, Tehran. Um, we saw initially um, blocking of Instagram and WhatsApp in the province where Amasa Amini is from, which only expanded. So on September 23rd, the U.S. announced it would be lifting sanctions to increase Internet access in Iran. What does that do, and, and how does that actually work? <clears throat> sure, so uh, great question. Um, we're super excited that last week the U.S. Department of the Treasury issued Iran General License, GLD2, a sanctions carve-out, to increase support for internet freedom in Iran. So what does this mean in practice? In practice, this means that US-based companies can offer tools or services like video conferencing, e-learning platforms, automated translation, web maps, user authentication services, and cloud services to people in Iran with confidence that they are not breaking US law. Um, and this is critical, so marginalized people and human rights defenders uh, can use the goods and services they depend on to stay safe and active. And does it actually make a difference, Jennifer? It does. It makes it makes a massive difference. Um, and there's more the U.S. government could do in this space. Well, I um, wanted to, to ask you that. What more can the U.S. government do to, to make sure that the Internet is accessible in a country like Iran? Sure. Um, one would be ensuring that sanctions accord with, with human rights in both scope and purpose. So this means aligning with the principles of necessity, proportionality, and legality. So big picture here, we're fighting for a human rights-based approach to sanctions rather than a technocratic or economic approach. Uh, secondly, the U.S. government could provide greater certainty for companies that policies will not change rapidly, right? As we know, companies are very risk-averse. They would rather over-comply than get in trouble with uh, the U.S. government. Uh, number three, we encourage the U.S. government to hold actual consultations with civil societies and companies um, in, in working through their sanctions policy. Unfortunately, the sanctions space is usually very hush-hush and closed. There's not much room for civil society input, so we would love to see the process be much more transparent. Um, in addition, it would be helpful for the U.S. government to issue companies specific licenses to operate in companies. This could give companies even greater confidence that uh, they won't get in trouble. You know, you mentioned this before that the Iranian regime specifically targeted Instagram and WhatsApp because of their popularity in, in, in Iran. They're both owned by Facebook. So is there a role for social media companies to play in supporting protesters in these authoritarian regimes? Yes, 100 percent. There's a there's a huge role. Um, you know, social media companies are accountable to international human rights law um, uh, and also the UN guiding principles on, on business and human rights. So we we call on the social media platforms um, to do right by the people of Iran. So this isn't the first time that Iran has used Internet blackouts as a tool to control protests. Is this part of a growing trend among authoritarian regimes? I guess because it's so effective. Yes, 100%. At Access Now, we lead the global Keep It On co coalition to combat internet shutdowns around the world. So this is certainly a growing trend, unfortunately. Um, and especially we're seeing an increasing trend um, in the lead up to elections. Authoritarian regimes are, are shutting off the internet to su suppress dissent. Um, and as we know, um, shutting off the internet has, right, not only egregious human rights repercussions, uh, it also has very negative economic uh, repercussions for countries as well. And and how else is, is your organization Access Now helping in Iran? Um, we, so um, my colleagues who lead our, our MENA program are in touch with local 
civil society organizations. Um, also, my colleagues in the U.S. were in touch with the Iranian diaspora to help elevate um, the calls to protect um, human rights defenders in, in the country. All right. Well, Jennifer, we'll watch and see what, what happens with those protests. Thanks so much for being on the program. Uh, thank you very much for the interview. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.